Hi guys and welcome back to Ashes Academy. So today I'll be going through an AQA exponentials and logarithms paper. Sorry, I've been quite slow with uploads. It's because I've been revising for my med school finals. But I'm trying to balance as much as possible. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first off with question one. So it says given that a is greater than zero, determine which of the expressions is not equivalent to the others. So in order for us to do this, we are going to rewrite all of the logarithms. So let's look at the first one. So we've got minus 2 log 10, 1 over a. So we know that any time that you have a number in front of log, another way of writing that is that number is to the power of whatever is next to log. So then our log, um, our minus 2 log 10, 1 over a, another way of us writing it is log 10, 1 over a, to the power of minus 2, and if you have 1 over a to the power of minus 2, anything that's to the power of a negative number, flip that over, so that leaves you with a to the power of 2, so that will be, another way of writing this is log 10a squared. Okay, and then with the next one, literally, the, another way of writing that, based on that rule as well, would just be log 10a squared. And then this one is written as log 10 a squared. So them, are, them three are the same. So automatically, if we've already got three that we found the same, then we can pretty much assume that the last one is not the same. But I'm just going to solve that to prove why that is not the same as the others. So another way of writing this would be log 10 root a to the power of minus 4. Power of negative, remember, we make it into a fraction, flip it. So that would be the same as saying. Um, 1 over root a to the power of 4, and then we know 1 to the power of 4 is just 1, and then you've got your root a. So root a, another way of writing that is a to the power of a half. So then if you've got a half times 4, you end up with 2. So another way of writing that is 1 over a squared. So then that would be written as log 10 a to the minus 2, and that is not the same as the rest of them so therefore it's this one that is the lord one out okay and then having a look at the next one it says which one of these functions is decreasing for all real values of x so if we have a look all of them we can see that the first one is to the e to the power of x but it's to the power of a positive x so if it's positive x it's an increasing function so it's definitely not this one Having a look at the other one, so we've got f of x is equal to minus e to the power of 1 minus x. Well, having a look at the 1 minus x, um, we've got, so the minus e to the power of 1 minus x. So let's say if it was a negative x value, so I don't know, like 1 minus minus 6. That would end up being minus e to the power of 7, right? So that would be... Obviously, e to the 7 would be a big number, but once you stick a negative in front, that's a really, really negative number. But let's say you now change it into a positive value, so like 1 minus 6. So that will end up being minus e to the power of minus 5. And we know to the power of a negative value is 1 over that value. So then if you did 1 over that, that would be a really, and basically as your numbers increase, so like e to minus e to the 6, minus e to the 7, your numbers becoming progressively smaller, so the function is decreasing over time. Sorry, it is um, increasing over time because your one minus 1 over e to the power of like 5, for instance, is slightly bigger, even though it's a really small number, it's slightly bigger than minus e to the power of 7. So that one's not included. And then if we look at this one, so for instance, if you have minus e, I don't know, um, again, minus 6, minus 1, you end up with minus e to the power of minus 7, which is the same as saying 1 over e to the 7, like negative. Then let's say you have positive 6, right? So minus e and then 6 minus 1. So then if you have minus e and then 5, we can see that, again, that is an extremely negative number. And that's a bigger negative number than this one. So we can say that this function is decreasing. Then just to double check and clarify, 
in case we've gone wrong, possibly we're going to double check with the last one. So again, if we have minus e at six, and six is the favorite number for today. So minus minus six, that'll be minus e to the six. And again, that's a really negative number. So very negative number. Whereas let's say if we have minus e to the power of six, so that'll be a minus six, then you'd have one over e to the six as a negative number and that's a slightly bigger number than this one so we can happily say that that is our right answer okay so moving on to question four it says the function f is defined by f of x is equal to e to the power of x minus four and it wants us to find f to the minus one and state its domain so in regards to finding f to the minus one the best way to work it out is f of x is the same as saying y so if we've got this then in, in order to find the inverse, you swap the x's and y's, so it will be x is equal to the e to the power of y minus 4. So then, now another way of writing this is, if you ever take away from powers, it's the same as, so there's two ways you could do this. You could either do write it as x is equal to e to the y divided by e to the 4. Or you could write it as x is equal to e to the y times e to the minus 4. Either way is fine, to be honest. So, But I'll go with the second option. Okay, so now I've rearranged it like this. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over, because I'm trying to make y the subject again. Um, so I'm going to make change it to x over e to the power of minus 4 is equal to e to the y. And then using now my logarithms, um, oh, even before I get to using my logarithms, um, another way of writing this is e to the minus 4. So that will be x divided by 1 over e to the 4 is equal to e to the y. is equal to e to the y so then if you ever divide by a fraction that's the same as multiplying so, and then it being flipped around so that and then now i've got x e to the 4 is equal to e to the y okay so now that i've got this next thing that i can do is use my knowledge of logarithms in order to rearrange this. So just to refresh your memory, remember log a b is equal to x. So in this case, my a is e, so log e. My b is, oh, that's equal to that. My b is the x e to the, e to the 4. And the power is the y. So in order to really neaten this up, um, in regards to log e, another way of rewriting that is ln. So now I've got ln e to the 4 and then x equal to y. If you ever have ln e, it cancels out to 1. So now I've got 4x is equal to y. So then my final formula is going to be f minus 1x is equal to 4x and then in regards to stating my domain your domain for your inverse f of x is the same as the range for your original f of x
log a y over 196 is equal to a half and then log a to the power of a half is equal to y over 196 so then you would have root a because a to the half is equal to root a times 196 so 196 root a is equal to y so then that would be the final answer because we've written y in terms of a okay so now that we've done that question next bit is is that it says 7b which is it's basically saying that when asked to solve the equation 2 log a x is equal to log a 9 minus log a 4 the two values of x that we were left with was 3 over 2 or minus 3 over 2 and it says that we have to explain why this student is wrong so let's have a look through their workings out so in regards to this step to this step that seems fine here that also seems fine here that also seems fine however if we look here where they've got three over two and they've got minus three over two you cannot have a negative x value for logarithms so the answer would just be three over two so Okay, and then moving on to question 10, it says a scientist is researching the effects of caffeine and she models the mass of caffeine in the body using m is equal to m0 e to the power of minus kt. Then it says where m0 milligrams is the initial mass of the caffeine in the body and m milligrams is the mass of the caffeine in the body after t hours. It says on average it takes 5.7 hours for the mass of caffeine in the body to half. And it says one cup of strong coffee contains 200 milligrams of caffeine. Basically, they want us to use the model to estimate make the mass of caffeine in the scientist's body at midday so let's eventually break this down so first things first we want to work out what the constant k is so how we can do that is that we've been told that at 57 at 5.7 hours so when so m is equal to m0 e minus kt so when t is equal to 5.7 we know that so at 5.7 hours, the mass of the caffeine in the body halves. Um, let's say if you have a cup of strong coffee, which contains 200 milligrams. So 200 milligrams of caffeine. If the initial is let's say if you initially started off with 400 and then half of 400 is 200 so if it's halved it would have taken 5.7 hours okay so then using this formula now we can now rearrange this to work out what the constant k is so 200 divided by 400 is just a half so half is equal to e to the power of minus 5 0.7k. So then now using our knowledge of logarithms, um, we can rearrange this as log e half is equal to my 7k. So then log e, another way of writing that is ln. So then now we've got this to rearrange this, k is equal to ln to the power, well ln a half over divided by minus 5.7 if you put that in your calculator you should end up with 0 0.121604 and so on so then now we know what k is we can now substitute that value of k into where we we're working out how much well, what the mass would be at midday for two cups of coffee so if we know that in one strong 
cup of coffee with 200 milligrams, then in two strong cups, there'll be 400 milligrams. So that would be our initial starting point. And then e to the power of minus, so it would be minus 0 0.1211, so one for the k, times by our value of t, which if you're going from 8 a.m. to midday, which is aka known as 12 p.m., that's four hours. So for four, and then basically put that into your calculator to work that out, and that would leave you with roughly 245.929638, which would round to 246 milligrams of coffee and of caffeine. Sorry, and then it says the scientist wants the mass of caffeine in her body to stay below 480 milligrams so it says use the model to find the earliest time that she should drink another cup of strong um coffee so if you want it to be below 480 mils then what we need to do is if initially she had two cups of coffee which is 480 sorry 400 milligrams of caffeine then for her to stay below 480 she needs to be at at least 280 milligrams of caffeine in her body before she takes another cup of the 200 milligrams of coffee because when she takes another cup then she would reach that 480 mark so what we need to do is we want to make 280 because we're saying that's basically like the minimum so the maximum value of caffeine that she can have in her body before she can have another cup, aka the earliest time. So 280 would be equal to 400 e to the power of minus 0 0.121 times t. And we're going to work out what that t value is. So if we rearrange this, that'll be 280 over 400 is equal to minus 0 0.121 t. And then in order to rearrange this, well, e to the power of that so rearrange this i'll be ln aka log e um 280 over 400 is equal to minus 0 0.121 t so then to work out what t is divide that by minus 0 0.121 and that in your calculator would give you with an answer roughly about 2.94 to 3 significant figures so now we know what the time is that's in hours. So then in order to work out how many minutes that is, that's 2.94 times 60 because it's 60 minutes in an hour. That's 176.8 T6 minutes, which will roughly be 177 minutes. 177 minutes in hours is equal to 2 hours and 57 minutes. So then if we now add that on to um initially when she started which was 8 a.m that would be leave you at the time of 10 57 in the morning so we know the earliest time that she can take another cup of coffee is 10 57 in the morning Okay, and then it's a stated reason why the mass of the caffeine remaining in the scientist's body predicted by the model may not be accurate. Well, there's many different reasons. One of the reasons is the fact that people eliminate caffeine at different rates. So, you know, how everyone has different rates of metabolism. And another reason is that, you know, the amount of caffeine in a strong cup of coffee may vary. So you don't have to put both. This is just giving examples of different, because there's only one mark, so they just want one reason. This is give a reason. Strong cup of coffee may vary so to be honest it doesn't really matter like which ones but anything that seems like a valid point they'll accept okay and then on to question eight it says Teresa bought a house on the 2nd of January 1970 for 8,000 pounds and it says the house was valued by a local estate agent on the same day every 10 years 
up to 2010. So it's showing the valuations in the following table, and it's given us an equation for the well, a formula for the valuation price, which is V equals P um, Q to the power of T. So long story short, it wants to show that the formula can be rewritten as this log 10 V is equal to log 10 P plus T log 10 Q. So again, I'm going to move it over here to give enough space. So 8A. So first things first, we've got V is equal to P Q to the power of T. So but now we're going to like add log to both sides. P and Q and T. Then in terms of the log 10 P Q T, um, another way of rewriting that is whenever you're multiplying logs, another way of rewriting is write them out like as if they're being added. 10 Q T is equal to log 10 V. Then the next way to rearrange it is, remember if you've got a log number and then that's the power of something, you move that power to the front. That's another way of rewriting that. So then that would be log 10 P plus T log 10 Q. Um, have we made it look like how we want it? Yeah, we have. So yeah, we've shown that part. Then in terms of part B, it says the values in the table of um, log 10 V against T have been plotted and a line of best fit has been drawn on the graph below. Okay, and it says using um, the given line of best fit, it wants us to find the estimates for the value of P and Q. And this is give your answers to the correct three significant figures. Well, what we do know is here where our Y intercept is. That would help us to work out at least either P or Q. So let me write the formula from the previous question down here so I don't have to keep scrolling. Um, it was log 10V is equal to log 10P plus T log 10Q. Okay, so one way that we can rewrite all of this, well, not rewrite it, but at your y-intercept, your t is equal to zero. So t is equal to zero, then your log 10v is equal to log 10p, and zero times anything is zero, so then that would essentially cancel out. So then that means that at your y-intercept, your value of log 10v, which is, we zoom in to see what the value is, um, So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you've got 10 squares and then you've got 0 0.2. So each one is 0 0.02. So then that's 0 0.02. So then if you have a look. It's gone up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's about 3.9. So 3.9 is equal to log 10p. Great, so then now we know that we can really rearrange this to work out what P is equal to. So 10 to the power of 3.9 is equal to P based on this. And so in order to work out what P is, just put that into your calculator and P should be um, to three significant figures, 7,940. Um, and then in terms of our Q, um, based on the formula as well, based on your y is equal to mx plus c, if we know our c, our y intercept is log 10p, then we know our m, our gradient, sorry, our gradient is equal to log 10q, as our x value, based on the graph, is t. So our gradient is equal to log 10q. So in order to work out our gradient, um, we're just going to use two points from the graph so for instance we could pick literally any two points so we could pick this one here and this one here Okay, so coordinates for the first one was um, 20, so let's go down to see where it's roughly going down to. 
says about 26. Hopefully eight. And then so this one. About 32. So 32, 5. Okay, so for gradient, which is our log 10q, so that's going to be a change of y by changing x. So that'll be 5 minus 4.8 over. 32 minus 26. And so in your calculator, that would leave you with 0 0.2 over 6, which would be 1 over 30. So then log. 10 q is equal to 1 over 30 so then q would be equal to 10 to the power of 1 over 30 which when you calculate would give you 1.0797 roughly and to three significant figures that would be 1.08 okay so for our p it was 7940, for a Q it's 1.08. Then it says part C, determine the year in which Teresa's house will be worth half a million pounds. So in regards to that, if we quickly scroll up. So our P and Q are constants. Okay, so P and Q are constants. But it does say V is equal to the price value in pounds, and then you've got PQT. So that means log 10 V, which in that point half a mil is just 500,000, is equal to log 10 P, which was the 7,940 times the 1.08 t so okay because we're trying to work out the actual year this would happen um we're going to end up rearranging this so then that would be five thousand five hundred thousand divided by the 7940 equal to 1.08 t so now if we rearrange this in terms of oh, we'll put that to the power of t so it's clear log that will be log 1.08 the 500,000 divided by the 7,940 um, is equal to T. So then now if you put that into your calculator, you should end up with an answer of T being equal to 53.82. Okay, so now we know that the number of years, like from the initial um, year this all started, is... 53.82. Um, going back through the question, it says that Teresa initially bought the house in 1970, so we need to add those number of years onto 1970. So if you add 53.82 plus 1970, you should end up with. Two thousand and twenty-three point eighty-two, which would round up to because you're saying you're determining basically in which year um, Teresa's house will be worth half a mil. So that's some point during two thousand and twenty-three. So we'll say in two thousand and twenty-three, that's when the house will reach that amount price and it says explain whether your answer to part c is likely to be reliable well having a look at this no not really because the valuation rate may fluctuate like so many things so no as the valuation rate may fluctuate rate fluctuate anyways so yeah that's that one fluctuate
Wow, I haven't spelled that correctly, and I cannot move on without spelling that correctly. It's as embarrassing. So, fluctuate. Okay, cool. So, moving on to question A, it says, basically, a student is conducting an experiment. Um, it's given us an, a formula for a beaker containing a hot liquid and um, the temperature change over time. Um, it also mentions that two minutes, the temp after two minutes, the temperature falls to 68 degrees, and it initially started at 75 degrees. So, it wants us to find the temperature of the liquid after 15 minutes, and it wants us to give our answer to three significant figures. Well, first of all, if we know that after two minutes, let's write that formula first so actually in this scenario we don't even need to write that formula so theta d and r temperature um is equal to five bracket four plus um lambda e to the power of so k is our constant um and we don't really know what k is yet so yeah we will need to work out using this so i'll just put minus k and then in terms of 15 minutes. So in order to work out what K is first, so it says that after two minutes it falls to 68 degrees. So then 68 would be equal to 5 bracket 4 plus lambda e to the power of minus K. Um, and then it says after two minutes, so then T would be 2. It's minus T K. Okay, so we're going to have to rearrange this to work out what K is equal to. So first things first, we're going to expand this bracket. So by expanding the bracket, we would end up with 68 is equal to 20 plus 5 lambda e minus 2k. But hold on, wait a minute. Before we even try and work out what k is, we need to work out what lambda is as well, because that's also a constant. So we're going to use this knowledge as well. So we know that uh, if I write this out here, I'm really going to do part A up here. If I know that at 75 degrees, the temperature T is equal, sorry, the time is equal to zero because that's the initial starting point, then my formula would be 75, because that's the temperature at that point, is equal to 5 bracket 4 plus lambda e to the power of zero because anything to um, times zero is zero. So then that would be that. So then we know that. Anything to the power of zero is also equal to one. So that's going to be, if we were to expand that, 20 plus, so five times one, um, times lambda, which would be five lambda. Um, and then rearrange this will be 55 is equal to five lambda. So then lambda is equal to 11. So now we know that lambda is equal to 11. Our 68 is equal to 20 plus 55 e minus 2k so then 48 would be equal to 55 e minus 2k um e minus 2k is equal to 48 over 55 rearrange for this would be ln 48 over 55 is equal to minus 2k so then k would be equal to ln 48 over 55 divided by minus 2. So then if you put that into your calculator, you'd end up with a value of 0 0.0680601. So now we know what that is. That's worked out what our k is equal to. So if we substitute our k value here, it would be minus 0 0.06, so on, multiplied by that. Um, and our lambda is 11, so substitute what lambda is. And basically, in order to work out what the temperature is, if you substitute that all in, you should be left with an answer of, so three significant figures, 39.8 degrees Celsius. So then part B then goes on to say, find the room temperature of the Laparity and give your reason why. So remember, this formula here is just giving us the temperature of the hot liquid, but the actual temperature of the room would be 20 degrees, aka okay, your 5 times your 20, as you see here. And the reason why it would be 20 degrees is because we know that lambda is a constant that we have to add on. And we know that when T is equal to zero, um, our constant ends up just being 5 theta. So that's being added on to 20 degrees. And as you may have noticed, as time goes on, the temperature keeps reducing towards that 20 degrees. So yeah, our room temperature 
is equal to 20 degrees as the temp. And also that 20 is equal to our y-intercept and your y-intercept would tell you what the room temperature is. So as the temperature gets closer to the y-intercept as time increases. Something along those lines. Um, obviously don't abbreviate as much as I have. So then it says find the time in minutes for the liquid to cool to one degree above the room temperature of the laboratory. So if we know room temperature is 20 degrees, then one degree above that would be 21 degrees Celsius. So we have to work out how long it takes to get to 21 degrees using the formula that we initially had in the question. So that would be 21 is equal to 5 bracket 4 plus lambda e to the power of k, which was um, 0 0.06, I've just shortened it for that, and dot, 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 times um, the t, which we're trying to work out how long it takes in minutes. So then that would be, if I put it here, b, I, I have enough space to work out. So then 21 would be equal to 20 plus 55 e to the power of minus 0 0.06 dot 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 times t um so then one is equal well one over 55 would be equal to e to the power of minus 0 0.06 dot 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 times t so then ln bracket one over 55 um, divided by 0 0.06 dot 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 is equal to t and so if we put that all into our calculator we would be left with t is equal to 59 minutes so then it would take us 59 minutes roughly and then lastly it, last question by the way guys it says explain why the model might need to be changed if the experiment was conducted in a different place so purely because if your temperature if you're conducted in a different place different places are going to have different room temperatures and so because the room temperature will be different and that is the end of exponentials and logarithms aqa um a level and i hope that was really useful thanks for watching